if a b all the way up to j are real numbers such that a minus 1 the whole square plus b minus 2 the raised to the power of 4 plus c minus 3 raised to the power of 6 all the way up to j minus 10 raised to the power of 20 if the summation equals 0 what is the value of b times d times f times h times j we have some numbers some really big numbers some really small numbers we need to check out what makes sense so the core concept that is tested in this question is primarily this it basically if you take a look at this expression however big it is you'll realize that all of these exponents all of these powers end up being even numbers in the first case it's two second case it's four third case it's six all the way up to 20 for the tenth of this expression if the powers of real numbers are even then those numbers cannot be negative right so none of these expressions let's say call this expression one two three all the way up to ten not one of these ten expressions can be negative we have some of these 10 expressions adding up to a 0. Some of a set of numbers can be 0. When some of those numbers are positive, some of those numbers are negative. This is one possibility. Or if all of these numbers are 0, we realize that here none of these numbers could be negative. So either all of these numbers can be positive or all of these numbers can be 0. So if all of these numbers are positive or even if one of these numbers is positive you'll realize that the summation is not going to be zero the summation is going to be positive because if you have one of these numbers is positive you need a negative number to offset it so the only way with the powers being even the sum of these 10 numbers can be equal to zero is when each of these expressions is a zero which means a minus 1 the whole square is zero b minus 2 raised to the power of 4 is zero c minus 3 raised to the power of 6 is zero so is j minus 10 raised to the power of 20 which translates to the fact that a minus 1 is a 0, b minus 2 is a 0, j minus 10 is a 0. So what does that translate? This entire expression finally boils down to giving us a value of a as 1, b as 2, c as 3, all the way up to j as 10. So this is what this expression essentially means. Now that we have got this, finding the value for this expression is child's play. We need to find out the product of b, d, f, h and j. b is the second number from the left. This is the fourth one, sixth, eighth and tenth. So the product of b, d, f, h, j is nothing but product of two times, four times, six times, eight times, ten. You can find the product as is. I'm going to take a two common from each of these five numbers. So if I take a two common from each of these five numbers, we'll be left with the two power five outside and then a one times, two times, three times, four times, five. Slightly easier to multiply. 20 into 3 is 60, 60 into 2 120, 2 power 5 is a 32, 32 times 120 is the answer for this. 32 times 120, 32 into 12, 32 into 10 is 320 plus 64, 384, 3840 is the answer to this question. Right? So though this expression looks a little cumbersome, the concept that got tested in this is basically, if you have real numbers, raise them to even powers, you will get an answer which is going to be non-negative. If you're adding a bunch of non-negative numbers and that ends up being a zero, then it is evident that not even one of these numbers can be anything other than zero, which means each of these expressions, a minus one the whole square, b minus two raised to the power of four, each one should be a zero, translating to the fact that a equals one, b equals two, then the rest of it is just mechanics. Quickly summarize this calculation in a printed form. We have the product to be equal to this expression, taking two common from each of these five numbers, we have two power five into actually a five factorial. If you remember the value of 5 factorial, that's 120. 32 into 120 is 3840. Choice C is the correct answer. Classify this one somewhere around 650, more for the fact that this expression looks a little daunting. Otherwise, conceptually, it's a very simple question. Right? So this gives an idea about how something that we know, right, square of a real number cannot be negative, can be made into a question of this kind. Before you leave, two things. Sign up as a trial user at wzkwo.in slash core. It's one of the most comprehensive online GMAT course Get started with a free topic, statistics and averages, build momentum to your GMAT preparation. Subsequently, pay up and unlock the remaining topics. Lastly, subscribe to the channel youtube.com slash Vizaco and spread the word among your friends who are preparing for GMAT. You may also choose to join this channel as a member for a small monthly fee and enjoy member-only perks that come with it and will help you boost your GMAT preparation.